In this unit, we'll be finalizing a few important prerequisites with our new meme coin market, creating a loan and creating a liquidity pool for arbitrage traders. In order to accomplish these tasks, we're going to be showing off how to work with blueprint contracts using Titanoboa. Before we get going, a quick reminder that all of these videos are sequential. So we strongly recommend that you work through the prior three lessons before you get going to this one. To help you out, we've taken everything that we accomplished in the first three lessons and squashed it into this Redux file, which we're just importing in the first cell so we don't have to redo everything we've done before. This gets us up to speed with everything in prior units like launching our meme coin token and then using the factory to create a lending market against it. For every Llama Lend market that gets launched, you can see in the UI here that it's deploying a whole suite of contracts, the AMM, the controller, the monetary policy. All these contracts simply get launched with the correct settings whenever we use the factory. If we look into the factory contract here, you can see under the hood how it works. Essentially, it's been initialized with some implementation contracts. These are just pointers to on-train addresses that store all the templates for the contracts. These are referred to as implementations or blueprints. When you call the factory, it simply reads the blueprint contract from the target address on chain and deploys it with all the correct initialization settings. You can see a good example of it down around here, where the price oracle is created from the blueprint. We're not going to get into too much detail about this, but we do urge you to check out the Viper documentation. The Viper documentation shows a few built-in functions it has for contract creation from on-chain addresses. You can see minimal proxy, copy of, blueprint. For our sake though, what we care about is simply how do we deal with these on-chain. We're going to be using Titanoboa to load these from implementation addresses. So in previous units, we had it easy. All the contracts we were dealing with were already deployed on-chain. So when we forked the mainnet, we were able to just pull the ABIs from Etherscan. In this case, we don't have the luxury of doing that because we've launched new markets that have been verified on-chain. Fortunately, it's pretty easy because all these implementation contracts have already been verified on Etherscan, or Arbiscan in this case. So all we need to do is pull in the ABI, the implementation contract, and create a contract object using it. So our task here is to cobble together this load from implementation function. All it's going to do is it's going to read the Blueprint API that's been uploaded to Arbiscan and apply a contract object using it. So as you mentioned in prior lessons, Titanoboa richly rewards people who just read through the source code. So if you look through the interpret.py file, you can see that there's already the from etherscan function that we used in the previous unit. It has all the logic that we need. It fetches the ABI from etherscan, or in this case, Arbiscan, and it returns what's called a ABI contract factory. So we can just mimic this logic exactly. The only difference is that we need to separate out the address. So we have one address for the implementation contract and we apply it to a contract at a different address. So in order to get this going, all we need to do is copy over the same imports that it is using. So it's using the API contract factory and it's using the uh, fetch ABI from etherscan function. And from this, it's going to be fetching the ABI from Etherscan, but in this case, it's using the ABI address. And instead of the URL and API key, we have previously hard-coded this as the Arbiscan API and the Arbiscan key. And then from here, it's going to be returning this ABI factory contract object, but it is now at the contract address. And this is now going to go ahead and load these. And you can see we've loaded the three contracts, the vault, the controller, and the AMM from the relevant implementation contracts that are in the factory's vault implementation, controller implementation, and AMM implementation. Simple as. Now let's supply this new market that we created with CurveUSD. On sidechains, CurveUSD itself functions like a blueprint contract. 
It's a dumb template with the standard ERC-20 functionality, plus the ability to, let's say, mimic, uh, interact with a bridge. Uh, so here you can see the Curve USD contract, which is, is Solidity. <laughs> you might say, why is Curve using Solidity? Curve only uses Viper. Well, on side chains, when you are launching a contract, essentially what you're doing is you are just deploying these templates from, in this case, the Arbitrum token bridge contract. Looking through the Arbitrum repo, you can actually see what this L2 gateway contract looks like. It's a simple contract with this bridge mint function built in. And this bridge mint function has the property that can only be called from this gateway address. Fortunately, Boa lets you simulate any call from any address, as long as you're just working against like a forked main net like we are. So all we need to do to get Curve USD into our account is to spoof this address and tell it to make a call to mint whatever we'd like. So within Boa, this specific function that we need is called prank. In the previous unit, we saw the EOA address. This is just the default address that the context manager is using to interact with any contract. Now, for our case, we're going to use this prank function. Anything within the block after you prank an address is going to execute from that specific address. And then when it's done, it's going to revert back to the EOA address. So we're going to use this to set the minter address. And that is defined as the L2 gateway. And once we've spoofed this address, we're going to be able to mint whatever we like for Curve USD. So within this, we're going to copy over this here with boa.env.prank. We'll set the address as the Curve USD L2 gateway. And then with this, we're going to be able to call the bridge mint function. And we'll simply set this to the user that's receiving the tokens and the amount of tokens that they're receiving. And if this works, we will see, where did we do wrong? Uh -huh. That we initially have zero curve USD and now we have 100,000 curve USD. So we're gonna make Jerome Powell blush there. Depositing curve USD to the vault contract. We'd like to take out essentially a test loan. But to do so, this vault contract needs to be funded with Curve USD. So we've minted 100,000 Curve USD to ourselves. In order to supply it to the vault contract, all we need to do is approve Curve USD to work with the vault and then deposit it saying the balance that we'd like. So if this works, we're going to take the 100,000 Curve USD that we minted and deposit it to the vault contract. And as you can see, 100,000 is moved from the user to the controller contract. Pretty easy. Taking out the test loan is just a touch more complicated. Not that much, but uh, within Curve USD and Llama markets, we have this concept of bands where you deposit your collateral over a range of bands. A narrow range of four is the riskiest. The largest of 50 is the least risky. Uh, we'll go ahead and set the number of bands to four here. We'll take the 100,000 in Curve USD or rather with a Viper with hat token as collateral. We'll call the controller's max borrowable function to see at this number of bands how much we could mint. We'll approve it and then we'll create a loan setting the number of bands and the borrow amount. So in this case, uh, 100 million Viper with is used and we are able to take out $100,000 uh, using this massive amount of collateral. All right, next up is we need to create our curve pool. In order for lending markets to be successful with Llama Lend, we need healthy liquidity pools in which arbitrators can arbitrate the token. If there's no arbitrage traders, the soft liquidation mechanism is not going to work. And in the next unit, we're going to show off how to actually perform liquidations on Curve USD. But in order to do so, there has to be a healthy liquidity market. So all these parameters here, they look complicated. Uh, they've been covered in previous units. 
the important thing to note is that these are just the sort of default parameters when you launch a crypto v2 pool so we've gone ahead and plugged them in for you um, when all this uh, we're doing is we're taking a look at the pool factory uh, we're able to pull this from etherscan which we covered previously then we take a look at the pool count to make sure that it's actually launching correctly it's using an implementation id because the pool factory works the same way as the llama land factory where it's got several different implementation contracts that points to on chain and they can be upgraded we deploy our pool and given that pool we confirm that it's been deployed if so we're going to again use our implementation contract because this new pool that we deployed isn't verified but the implementation contract has been verified so if we run this then we're going to be able to take a look at the pool which was successfully deployed to this address finally all we need to do is seed the pool as I mentioned we want the pool to be healthy. So we're going to create an amount of liquidity in this pool that dwarfs the amount of our loan value. Otherwise, we might run into trouble. So we had created a loan for 100,000 Curve USD. We're going to seed 10 million to this pool just to make sure that there's sufficient liquidity. If there's not sufficient liquidity, then it might be impossible to perform liquidations or just not profitable for arbitrators to do so. Uh, so just a reminder that if you're thinking of launching a Llama Lend pool, you need to have a very healthy amount of liquidity. So in this case, we're calculating the parameters of the pool, making sure that we are able to mint it. If we do, we go ahead and mint ourselves some Curve USD out of thin air. We approve it, we approve the collateral token, and we will seed our pool. And if all works well, we will have received 10 million LP tokens back. So we know we covered a lot of concepts here and we moved pretty fast, but now we're ready to play. In the next unit, we will get into how to arbitrage trade using all of this that we set up. If you got any questions, definitely drop them in the comments. Stay safe out there, friends.